Hello, welcome to another Parametric House Grasshopper tutorial and in this one we're going to uh, learn how to use the twisted box through surfaces from Pufferfish plugin to have some twisted boxes and then put a series of curves which is actually a dodecahedron outline inside these boxes twisted boxes and produce the final results we're going to use also uh, the dendro plugin to give this uh, a voxelized alliance so uh, when we produce the lines inside let me just disable this uh, we're going to voxelize that to produce the final result so let's just get started from scratch and step by step but before we start welcome to our channel if you're new to our channel consider subscribing because we have weekly tutorials and if you don't know about rhino grasshopper uh, you can watch up this tutorial or p uh, playlist which I have explained about Grasshopper and why you should learn it. Okay. okay, to get started from scratch, let me explain first what we are going to do. Uh, assume that this is the first surface, so this is going to be a NURB surface and okay, assume that this is a NURB surface. Uh, this is going to be our first surface. Let's just type surface 1 and then I'm going to also make another surface up here that's the second surface I can type this surface 2 and then we can make the series of twisted box between these two surfaces using the pufferfish plugin so I'm going to use a simple technique to make the surface let's just go here select the rectangle plane surface make the surface remember that we are going to on the shaded mode uh, I want to make a copy of this surface so I'm going to use the alt key and move this a little bit up so we have a copy of this okay because I want to deform this surface uh, we can simply rebuild it we can use this command rebuild and increase the UV count okay for example if I put that to 10 to 10 you can see it's decreasing uh, I usually increase the UV count so I have a better smoother uh, deformation now what I want to do is to use this tool soft edit surface okay soft edit surface is actually going to deform the surface a little bit up uh, first we don't want a copy so I'm going to put that to no we don't need the fixed edges so that is to no two the direction is on the normal of the surface so it's going to go in the z direction and remember the u uh, and v distance is the deformation so if i just click here you can see that this is deforming the surface if i put that to for example 300 you can see that this is actually moving that um, more in the u direction than the v direction okay so it's moving more in the u direction so I can do that from here and here and hit ok or right click bring it a little bit down and these are the two surfaces we're going to work so you can just play around with these surfaces and let's bring them inside uh, grasshopper uh, we can put the bifocals plug in Okay, uh, first we need to go to the Parms menu, Geometry, and select these Surface tool. And set multiple surfaces, select this one as the first, and this one as the second, right click, and we have this in Grasshopper. If we want to have this uh, and save this inside Grasshopper, we can right click and internalize data. So we can just delete this and you can see that we have this inside Grasshopper without using the Rhino uh, saving file. Okay, uh, the next part is to produce a series of uh, twisted boxes between these two surfaces. So let's go to the Pufferfish plugin, open the menus, and select that tool we need. Uh, the Pufferfish plugin here, and you can see that we have this part, let me just make this maximize this so you can see that okay that's the twisted box menu and uh, let's just select this one and there are lots of ways you can make a twisted box the twisted box is a really great tool to morph something from a twisted box to another twisted box but for now we're going to focus on this tool twisted box through surfaces okay that is going to help us uh, to make a series of twisted box 
between a series of surfaces. That's easy, going to give that to the surface. And if I turn off the surface, you can see that we have this twisted box here. Uh, the parameters in the U, V and W, as you can see, it's between zero and one. That is because it's reparameterizing the surface and making the domain from zero to one, okay? And you can see by giving it like 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 to one, it's going to divide the dimensions in the U, V and W. So the easiest way is to use a range and the, you can also find it in the sets and in the sequence you can find range, okay? The default domain of the range is between zero and one and that is actually what we need. So that's really great. And then we can just give this a series of steps. For example, if I give that from one to 10 and get rid of the title and connect it to the steps, I can name this U, okay? And just copy this, another one for the V and another one for the W. So that is going to divide U, V and W, okay? You can see that that is a rough twisted box of the two surfaces. If I increase that in the U direction, you can see that it's increasing the U direction. You can also use those uh, boxes for producing the results, but for now, let's just go and increase the V. You can see that we can increase the V. So that is the V direction. And if I put the W, increase the W, you can see that it's increasing the division in the W. Let's put that to two and increase the V in the U. Okay, that's the box. So if I go here and bake the twisted box, you can see that these are a series of twisted box uh, divided into between these two surfaces. That's great. And now what we want to do is to go forward. Just for more information, uh, there are other options you can change here, but for now to make it simple as possible, we just need to produce the surface and UVW parameters to get the twisted box, okay? Uh, the next part is to put something inside this, okay? For this tutorial, I've used the dodecahedron uh, surface. You can use uh, the Launchbox plugin. Let me just show you here. The Launchbox plugin has the math and has this dodecahedron. Uh, put it here. You can have it here, okay? Or you can make it inside Rhino. I've made the example file, so you can download this example file from our website. I have internalized the lines, okay? But for now, just a quick trick you can use here if you want to use the Launchbox plugin. The radius is not really important because the size of this uh, geometry we're going to use is not going to affect the results, okay? Because it's going to scale it up and put it inside these boxes. So. Uh, we can just go here and go to this surface analyzes and use this wireframe tool to extract the wireframe. And if I bake that in Rhino, for example, you can see that we have these here. Okay. And something about this, let me just explain here, make that bigger so you can see that. Okay, and you can see that this is the orientation of Launchbox plugin, but for example, maybe we just want to put that on here. We want to sit it down on this plane. How can we do that? You can go to transform here and say orient three points. Okay, select the object, enter. Now we want to use three points as the plane. So I'm going to say this is the center the first direction and the second direction. Okay, that's going to be the plane. Then I'm going to put that here. Use the shift key as the X axis and again the Y as the Y axis. That's going to put that on the Y axis on the ground. If I put that in another direction, it's going to go to the top and here it's going to go to the bottom. So let's just go here and then we have a 
neat dodecahedron on the ground we want to use in our project. Remember the scale is not really important and you can use it uh, in any size you want. So let's just bring that also in Rhino, set multiple curves, right click, internalize, and we are good to go. We have that in Grasshopper. Okay, that's the first step. Now let's just morph it inside. We can use the native Grasshopper tools to do that. Uh, let's go to the transform. And in the morph, we're going to use the box morph. That's the simple way of morphing a geometry inside a box. Okay, if I give this curve to the geometry and uh, the reference, uh, which is the reference box, uh, we have to find a reference box for this. So I usually go to the surface and use this bounding box tool. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen is going to find bounding box for each of those lines. Right click and select union and give that to the reference. Okay, and now we have the target. But the problem here is that uh, you can see it's not going to give you the results. The reason here is that we have 30 different lines that want to morph. So it's going to say, okay, you have 30 lines. We have one, let me just type it here. We have 30 lines, we have one reference box, and perhaps, I don't know, maybe 12 target box. So it's going to mess up. It's going to put the first one in the first box, the second one in the second box, and go till the end, and then the extra is going to just be repeated in the last box. Perhaps this is the last box, you can see it's repeated, and so on. So how can we fix that? One of the ways I use, and it's going to fix also the bounding box, is to use the group tool. Okay, you can just type group and use this green group a set of objects tool. Uh, oh, let me just type it and then find it where it is. Or you can go to transform utility and find this group on group tool. Okay, now if I group these objects, which are the lines, it's going to give us one group. You can use the group tool for the morphing, and then without using this bounding box tool, you can use the trick, which is use the params, and here, the, let me just see if it types, okay, the box, the box tool, which is actually going to find the bounding box of the group, which is exactly what we need. And you can see it's uh, fitting on the top of the, uh, top and the bottom of the dodecahedron, so I'm going to give that to the reference, and now you can see we are getting the results and now we have that uh, on the output the geometry but you can see it's a uh, let me just zoom in it's the group objects uh, and we have to ungroup these objects so it's really easy let's say ungroup or you can find it in the transform utility and ungroup tool and now uh, okay let's just go here and you can see that we have 24 boxes with uh, each of them has 30 lines which is the dodecahedron lines inside that we don't need these groups so we have to flatten this down and if you don't know about this you can watch the tutorial about flatten or graph up here uh, so simply just right click and flatten this so we have all the lines the 720 lines inside uh, one output Okay, now we are good to go and we just have to play with the numbers. If you want to, you can change the numbers here. Okay, remember that you can increase or decrease the numbers in the W direction. And then we have to convert that into a series of uh, a mesh, a mesh, a singular mesh if we want to have this uh, 3D printed. Okay, now we have to, uh, and about the um, Pufferfish plugin, remember to put that in the file special folders and in the component folders and if you don't see the pufferfish plugin be sure to uh, let me just see if i have this okay right click here and go to the properties and just say unblock if you see the unblock button down here okay uh, i have installed also the dendro plugin you have to also put that in the file special folders and component folders and unblock it and then we will have a D, I guess it's here, okay? Better, okay. 
Now we have to convert these into voxels. So that's really easy, curve to volume. Give the curves here. Uh, we have to define a radius. I don't know about the size of my model, so I'm just seeing that maybe from 0 0.5 to 5 with two decimals. That's going to be the radius. And let's just go to the settings. So I'm going to go to the uh, convert and create settings. So remember, whatever you do, uh, convert a curve to a volume, mesh to a volume, or points to a volume, you have to give the settings to it. So I'm going to make the settings here like that. And you have to give this a voxel size. So uh, let's just give this a voxel. Let's increase the curve radius a little bit. Was too small. Okay. And remember the voxel size. If you increase the voxel size, maybe from one to three, increasing the voxel size will make it faster because the uh, resolution is going to be bigger and not smaller. So it's going to give you faster results. Okay. And you can see uh, something of how it's going to get the results. If I bake this, it's going to convert that into a mesh. So remember that you have to do another step. But before we convert that, we can just uh, go to the filters and maybe smooth a little bit the volume. So you can just give that to the volume, turn this off. And by changing the iteration, maybe three times, I want to increase the smoothness. You can see by increasing that, by increasing the radius also, you will get smoother results. So, And by increasing the radius, actually they are morphing into each other. How can we see the results better? Because it's like a shadowy like volume. Uh, let's just convert that into a mesh. So it's going to go to the convert and select volume to mesh because you have to convert this volume thing at last to the mesh. And again, you have to give this a volume setting. You can just give that create setting here and you will have the mesh. You can see uh, by giving this a uh, display, I usually use this display custom preview and use this create material tool. This is the trick I always use. A uh, swatch, a color swatch to the diffuse and a color swatch to the emission, which I usually use black. So that's going to give you a better result. So I'm going to put that into black, change this color. Okay. And then you can also increase the shine. So it's like zero to a hundred and increase this shine a little bit to give it a better look. That's it. That's how uh, you can use these surfaces to morph it down like that. Okay. Uh, remember that you can increase the radius or decrease the radius. But if you uh, want to have smaller radiuses, remember that you have to decrease the iteration of the smooth volume components. <laughs>